One of the many, but I've watched a lot of wrestling. It's I'm surprised that I haven't been committed to some institution for further study. We've gone from the sublime to the ridiculous, from the outhouse to the penthouse. We've seen one of the best matches we've seen in who knows how long at Bad Blood, and then we have seen some boo, some real pips, as Gleason might say. Mew, that's bad television. You know what? Well, we're going to talk about it today. I took what? a break in the middle of the wrestling, and I watched uh, Jeff Baldron recommended it to me. The four-part Pete Rose documentary on HBO on our Max, whatever it should be, whatever it is, whatever I'm saying. This sucks. I, today. I saw some of that. I saw some of that. Actually, I saw some of it in real time because Louisville's close enough to Cincinnati, and I used to go visit Aunt Lola and Uncle Tommy. That uh, that I saw some of it actually happen, and then I saw some of the other stuff. But go go ahead, do continue. Are you able to appreciate when someone outside of wrestling? I, I know he had some involvement with WWE, but you know he wasn't. He didn't give a shit. He wasn't involved. He just <laughs> wanted a payday, right? I mean, he wasn't anything with wrestling. But when right. someone outside of wrestling is just a complete worker, do you appreciate oh, that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> You know, while I wish that he hadn't, I don't see why the offense was so fucking great that he's one of the greatest players of all time. He didn't physically, you know, com commit assault, crimes, you know, horrible, felonious occurrences. No, he, he's he literally a, he's did a, the one thing they say they'll ban you for doing, he did. But he was, but in in today's world... If he announced, I'm going to Gamblers Anonymous because I have a gambler problem, and or Grapplers Anonymous, whichever one he wanted to go to, uh, and, and he would be the sympathetic figure because everybody, and see, he was the most popular motherfucker in Cincinnati and possibly in the state of Ohio, and, you know, amongst baseball fans and blah, 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 one of the great players of all time. Today, he would say, Mia Culpa, I'm sorry, I, I can't stop doing it. Because when he got one of the, what was it, night, WrestleMania 98 Kane tombstoned him, right? Uh, the one in Boston. Yes. Yeah. He got his 10 grand in cash and got in his car service, it wasn't a limo, I don't think, and immediately went to, what is that, Mohegan Sun or whatever casino is close up there. Yeah, in Connecticut, Mohegan Sun. Yeah, that's, you know, that's what he did it for, so it's a shame, but he didn't do anything horribly heinous that you shouldn't be able to say, again, in today's climate, yeah, I, you know, I I really am sorry that I fucking took a shillelagh and beamed that 87-year-old woman in the head. I've got old woman beanitis, and I'm going to rehab or whatever. Well, he did try that rehab thing, and again, he's accused of other things now outside of the gambling, but we'll leave that for a separate conversation. What did... Uh, they say now there's statutory rape accusations that he had women. And what? According to this documentary, he was running cocaine. I mean, it's like... What? Of, you need to watch this thing. Well, I didn't say... Like I said, I saw a little bit of it. Uh, but remember, but it, he went... When he first got... When he first accepted... When he signed what MLB offered him, which was a lifetime ban, he went to Gamblers Anonymous. He went to some like, place where you have to go to meetings. Because in the documentary, he said, he goes, I couldn't relate to any of these people. They're all sitting there like, I lost everything. I gambled away everything. He's like, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. It's the one thing because it compromises the game. And that's what the Black Sox scandal in 1919 is all about. Shoeless Joe Jackson and all those other players. And uh, actually, um, well, now that was, Tim Hornbaker that wrote was a book them, about Shoeless yes. Joe Jackson. Hornbaker wrote, uh, the, the book, wrote the book on the subject, literally. But that was, they were actively on the field throwing the fucking game. Now, there, that's... Pete Rose you know, was in the clubhouse making bets on his own team's games. But did he bet on him to win or lose? He says he bet on him to win. Well. He's said a lot of different things over the years. He said a lot of different things. <laughs> Again, he said he never gambled on baseball. Then he said he gambled on baseball but never his own team. Then he said he gambled on his team but only to win. Then he died. So who knows where he was going. Well, but we, we know how he was getting there. In cash. 
Uh, just uh, drop me on my head and give me my money. Well, here's the question. Someone like that who does not get into the Hall of Fame because of ineligibility, because they did something that was a grave offense to baseball, and then the Hall of Fame literally changed their rules to prevent someone banned from baseball from being in the Hall of Fame. Now that he's dead, should he go into the Hall of Fame? Or should he not go into the Hall of Fame? What's the goddamn harm again? Inle well, unless, uh, you know, running cocaine and underage people, I didn't hear about this, but... And he had this like, little assistant going that, on there. You have to watch this. He had this assistant who actually seems like a nice guy who got loaded on steroids because he was hanging out at Gold's gym. <laughs> and he was like the assistant who took the rap and went to prison for Pete Rose. And steroids made him go crazy. He said he was a nice guy. And then he started taking the steroids. And next thing you know, he's driving drugs from Ohio to Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> or the other way around, excuse me, from Fort Lauderdale to Ohio. Well, he'd have to come back, wouldn't he? One way or the other. So technically, it, you know, unless he was just moving there and staying. So I took a break from the wrestling workers to watch a real-life worker, Pete Rose. Well, but uh, he has much of my support on the baseball thing, and we'll find out more about, is everybody going to goddamn eventually? Well, well, fuck the fucking, well, I was about to say fuck the Pope, but they've already said that. Not the Pope specifically. We haven't got any any uh, scoops on the Pope himself, have we? Just his ad ad administration and underlings. It's definitely a... It's definitely an era of kill your idols, or at least people just trying to like destroy icons or anything that's held up or holy by anyone anywhere. Just there's someone ready to tear it down for their own personal satisfaction and the, the glory of, you know, feeling like they won something. <sighs> Not to say Pete Rose doesn't deserve Pete Rose. I mean, you, you watch this thing. He's just a complete fucking lying sack of shit. I mean, he's a great ball player. I'm, you want him on your team, of course. But what a fucking piece of shit the guy is. You got to watch this. Okay, so what what year was the the height of the betting scandal with Pete Rose? Do you remember? I do remember because the Reds won the World Series in 1990. He got suspended in 89. He was the manager of the Reds. He had retired by that point. He retired in 86, and then he was just the manager. And it was while that period of time as manager. Apparently, he was betting on all sorts of stuff, including baseball before then, but they got him at least for the period of time he was manager, 87, 88. Well, uh, where I was going with that was... Suspended in 89. At that, that year, Randy Savage was on, I can't remember, some talk show, some mainstream show, I believe. And the host, is, you know, just asked him about, was it he plugging WrestleMania coming up or something? Who knows what the fuck? <laughs> but they said to you, you think you're going to win the match, Macho Man? And he said, ooh, Pete Rose is betting on me. It was just the greatest delivery. It popped the fucking audience. That was all that anybody was talking about at that point in time. And then you know what? He became, not that he became more famous, but, you know, almost not getting into the Hall of Fame became bigger than getting into the Hall of Fame. You know what I mean? The Susan Lucci syndrome. Yeah. It, well, it is, well, that's a little different. <laughs> I don't want to compare Pete Rose to Susan Lucci. Well, no, his boobs were bigger when he was older, but she wasn't ineligible. That's the difference. Well, no, but the thing is, she was known for not winning an Emmy more than for when she finally, after 40 years or whatever, won a fucking Emmy. So it's the same. I mean, she's, he's known more for not being in the Hall of Fame for 40 years. And if, he, if they'd put him in the Hall of Fame, then he'd be dusty and forgotten, consigned to the trash bin of history up on a shelf somewhere in a dusty room. But since he couldn't get in there, he was out in front of everybody shitting all over everything. You know what Susan Lucci's problem was? She should have gone into local news because you could just go into local news and win all sorts of Emmys nonstop. <laughs> like for all sorts of things, like crazy I, shit like that isn't even good wins Emmys. I Well, I heard about not... Too many years ago, heard about the local TV Emmys. I didn't know that was a thing for quite a while. And then I started talking to people that had won Emmys. And I'm like, yeah. God damn, if this guy can win a fucking Emmy. A friend of mine a few years ago, all of a sudden he's Emmy Award winner. I'm like, did you win an Emmy? It's like, well, I was the cameraman. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> they give them to everybody. Well, but they may have won an Emmy, but I won a Slammy. Huh. Yeah.
Well, we'll have more of uh, Emmy later on during the AEW. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah, yeah, yes, M- oh, Emmy. <laughs> Boy, she's not going to win an Emmy, a Tony, a Grammy, a fucking commie. She's not going to win it. All right. Anyway, 